Today on Green Pill Weekly, how hoop house structural loads can be affected by weather, equipment, crops, people, and materials. All right, folks, this is Nick, and today we're going to, as quickly as possible, go through hoop house structural loads. And this is just considerations that you might want to think about when you're purchasing or using your hoop house, and especially getting ready for some of the winter events that we've had as of late. In this, we will be discussing dead loads, live loads, wind loads, and snow loads. Dead loads are a consistent gravity load that is basically the weight of the building material of the hoop house. It's your walls, your roof, your braces, your hoops, and then it's additionally any permanent heaters, fans, lights, wiring, and plumbing that you're going to have in place. So at the very bare minimum, you're going to have to have materials strong enough to hold up the structure itself, plus any permanent items that you plan on installing. Keep in mind that greenhouse plastic is very heavy, and if you're going to double up that load, consider that additional weight. Live loads are anything that your house needs to stand up to, which includes you crawling on it. This uh, one of the pictures down here has a guy getting off a ladder that's too short. And yes, that's not right. But everybody here knows that you do it. I see you. I am you. I have done it myself. Probably going to do it again. So be real with yourself. If you're a couple of hundred pounds, be able to uh, know that that hoop, especially as a single unit, may have to hold you up, plus any fans, plus the weight of the structure. Plus, if you're going to do any hanging baskets, trellising, or if you're going to have any events. I know a lot of people that have farm-to-table dinners or gatherings inside of the hoop house itself. People on the left are having a lot more fun than I've had lately inside of a hoop house. And the guy on the right, I really don't know what he's trying to repair there, but know that the possibility for somebody to get on top or under to have to maintain is a very real possibility. I've seen pictures sent to us on Instagram where a cat has gotten up there, so... There's that to consider. Also, they even though it doesn't weigh much, just consider that the seasonal shade or the seasonal double layer, again, needs to be factored in. And these are all going to start multiplying up for more and more weight that the structure is going to have to hold up. Then we get into wind loads. Now, a lot of structures just come stock without any horizontal bracing or trusses. And this is where you're going to have to decide what's your location. Do you have wind barriers? Are you prone to severe weather? Are you prone to a significant spike? Are you going to start doing multiple things like trellising, having multiple layers, having to have a heater or circulation fan suspended from the ceiling? Are you going to run irrigation suspended from the ceiling? All of that stuff's going to add weight. So if it's already stressed and then you have uh, an exorbitant amount of wind, just know that that's further going to affect the structure. Now we think of wind from side to side, but also know that that's going to uh, do what's called raking, which is going from the end wall to end wall. And that movement can be mitigated by these diagonal braces from the hip board to the baseboard, either to the first hoop, or I kind of prefer going to the second hoop. It gives you a little bit more room to run. And if this is something that's keeping you up at night, as you can afford it, do things like these diagonal braces, do things like the horizontal braces and these truss components. Uh, we're a tad early on on this, but Bootstrap Farmer has in the works and production is just actually completed this week of these diagonal braces and these truss kits. It'll probably be another week or two before we're fully ready to release, but the need was there, so they're coming. Next to snow loads, and there's a really good article that kind of inspired this little talk. It's in a publication called Greenhouse Management, and there's an article by John Bartok. He's an agricultural engineer from the University of Connecticut, and this is a great article. He's got a ton of great articles on there, and I'll link that down below. But in it, he describes the difference between wet and dry snow loads. And by his calculations, a wet snow of three to four inches is equivalent to one inch of rain. And then a dry snow about 12 inches is the equivalent to one inch of rain. At eight pounds per gallon, one inch of rain can be the equivalent of 5.2 pounds per square foot, which can average six and a half tons spread over a 25 by 96 foot hoop house. Now, that seems like a lot, but remember each of these individual hoops, the baseboards, the hip boards, purling kits, ridge poles, all that stuff add up to really carry a lot of weight. If you get greenhouse plastic, it can hold it up, but that's why it's so important to consider all of these other considerations. Ice can play, like where I'm at, icing is a big problem problem. doesn't really stick to the material, but it is a consideration for access. And this brings us to maintenance. We field a lot of calls about, well, can these structures take 
XYZ amount of snow. It's always so subjective, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to, are you going to get out there, clear the snow from the roof, whether that's the rope method, or we saw a guy on Instagram here lately use a squeegee on the underside of the hoop house. He just squeegeed it down, worked out really well. I see some people use rakes on the top or boards on the top that they make with rounded edges to kind of pull that down. And then there's the dealing with the accumulation of the snow, the first three or four foot up. All that weight is putting downward and inward pressure on the hoops themselves, which could cause a collapse. Just think about like getting kicked in the knee. You're going you're gonna to fall down. Same thing could happen if you have too much snow load on those points of the hoop. So generally the United States along the southern coast is rated at zero pounds per square inch is what we can expect. But if the uh, last couple of weeks have told us anything, places like Houston can get snow and it should be at least considered. And in the northern states along the Canadian border and upwards in Maine, you're looking at greater than 100 pounds per square inch worth of snow that can accumulate over the winter. So listen, if you are in these northern states, getting the basic package may not be enough. You're the farmer. It's your responsibility to make sure you're doing your due diligence, selecting the proper material, using correct building methods. Don't skimp out. Do the extra braces. Plan for the maintenance. It's your responsibility. And then factors to consider is a lot of folks love to be in EMT and the thinner gauge top rail. You know, all that savings comes at a cost down the line if you have these weather events. So selecting the wrong materials, using PVC, using non-greenhouse film. Some of these you may get by a couple of years. Some of them may not last. The first storm, you have to consider the materials wasted, the labor wasted, labor to rebuild, money to rebuy the correct materials that you should have got the first time. And then you have the crop loss. So if you're thinking about doing this, you know, you may consider just doing the right thing and selecting the material that's made for that intended purpose. It seems like here lately, man here in Texas, it's either it's the extreme of everything. And then every single person that calls the bootstrap farmer hotline is just convinced that they live in the windiest part of the United States. If it was as windy as everybody thought, I don't think anybody would uh, still be here. But look, it's a fair assumption. If you think you're going to put this up and you're relying on this to feed your family or to earn a living, and if every time the screen door slams up against the house in a, in a windstorm, you're having to stay up at night, you know, get yourself some insurance. You don't have to do everything at once. Add to it as you can, but get that thing braced up for your conditions, plus a little bit of insurance room for uh, some of these erratic weather events. You know, some folks have windbreaks like trees or bushes or hills or other structures to kind of help break up some of that wind. If you don't have that, you might consider that a very long-term investment. You know, just make sure that if you do something like that, you are considering evergreens. You know, if you have a bunch of deciduous bushes and the snow blizzards come around and you don't have any leaves, that's not going to get broke up very well. So just something to think about. Your location, running out of propane. Andy talked about propane a couple of episodes ago. Make sure that you're stocked up. If you're heating your house, make sure that in the event of a flood or a snow event or an ice event, that you can even get access to your tunnel to either make sure that the heater, heater is on, make sure that the propane guy can get up there, make sure that you can get over there to take the snow off, and make sure that's not so far away that it's the excuse that you have for not actually doing it. So consider where you're putting that. And also the ground conditions. If you put this thing in an area that is prone to uh, ground saturation with underground water or a place that holds water really bad, just know that your ground posts are going to tend to move a little bit or at least have the opportunity to move. So even if we go back to the first few slides and look at that gravitational pull and then we start adding weight to it, if your ground posts shift, that may be the little bit that that high tunnel needs to collapse. So it's something to consider. And on top of everything else, just consider the load layering. And by that, I mean everything added up. You have the live loads, the dead loads, the wind loads and the snow loads oftentimes can all combine. So if you think you're going to cheap out and then start doing some of these layers, it may come back to bite you in the end. And lastly, look, I'm just going to say this. High tunnels can straight up take a beating. When that plastic is on tight and everything's battened down and your doors are secure and your louvers are secure, that wind is going to hit and go right around. And for the most part, the bracing is there to help mitigate some of this stuff in these weather events. And with this load layering, I really don't think there's a greater thing that you can do as an investment for your farm other than hoop house production. And I know, yeah, we sell these things. But from my own farming experience, they're a pleasure to work in. The crops are so much better. You have so much more control in the simplicity in the design, whether you do gothic or round. And despite the sizes and all the other considerations, these things are pretty strong. But at the end of the day, take these considerations and plug them into your planning process or your upgrade process if you already have that. I don't ever want to open up the computer and see anybody's hoop house, cat tunnel, greenhouse, anything tore down. So I hope this is helpful. We'll see you next week.